now? There he is. Hello, sir. Uh, Can you hear me? Uh -oh. He's like, <laughs> you are so funny. Yeah, you doing touch-ups? Yes, I just want to make sure that you know that I got the right light and the light. You know what I'm saying? Well, is uh, this like, is this light weird or special or strange or do I need more light? <laughs> you got light, girl. Okay, I got light. Okay. You got light. Hold on, I'm just adjusting my phone ever so slightly. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so I can sit back. Jay, okay. the kids are joining in. Um, I was just saying, um, so talking about people keep asking about watching our Jay's chats over and over again. You and I are working on our own YouTube channel called Jay's Chat. It's not up yet, guys. So it's going to be up, I think, tomorrow or the next day. But as soon as we do, Mo, both Miss Jay and I are going to yeah, uh, tweet about it and everything. Right. Yeah, we'll announce it so you guys know. So we're actually going to put all the Jay's chats back to week number one, cycle one up on YouTube. Right now, if you do want to catch up on the last couple of weeks, you can go to my Facebook page where I have them up right now, which is just J Manual Official, and you can catch the, um, the last ones. But we'll have the YouTube channel set, and that's where all of them are going to go, to YouTube. Uh, let mm. me get the questions up. Um, Ms. Shea, we got so many questions about this cycle. I, okay, I'm not going to lie. So wait, so you guys actually might think Ms. J and I talk before we do our chats. I mean, we talk, but we don't talk about what we're going to say in the chat. So just, just so that everybody knows how I'm feeling today. Ms. J, I'm stressed out. I'm not even lying. I literally feel like I have like PTSD. But listen, I think we all are stressed out. I mean, globally. And um, I'm just trying to keep it together, baby. I, I love, I, you know, I just had my breakfast in the earlier. What you I eat? Eat. And, you know, granola, right? Do you have granola? Some, I had some yeah. granola, some blueberry, strawberries, and some yogurt. You know, that's what I had. I just think for the eating. Um, not that I'm trying to lose any weight, baby. You know what I mean? Being here <laughs> at home, you know, I'm eating. But um, so far, so good. And um, it's just, there's so much that's happening, you know, around us in the world, personally. Yeah, uh, what is go what is going is on? Like, here we have Ahmad Arbery, and like, what is going on in the world? Like, in terms of like, you know, racism is one huge thing, and I guess we're going to be talking about it today. But just humanity, humanness, being humane to one another. I first, I'm glad that they've been arrested. You know, yes. I mean, they're murderers. They're just out and out murderers. Uh, simple. Yeah, there was no way to. There was no getting around that. I mean. Can you imagine you being just jogging through a neighborhood and you're shot because you're jogging through a neighborhood? I mean, that this layer, so we can go back to, you know, Trevor yeah. Martin and else too. It's just really, really sad. It's really, yeah. really sad. And that me being a black man my entire life. Now, y'all know Jay's a little high yellow, but she's black. No, I'm, I'm um, black. I've identified as black um, my whole life. My parents are from South Africa, where we went I, in cycle four. My parents, so I, I am, about? yes, yes. And um, just to think that this could happen to you just going across the street. I mean, just going to neighborhood, it's, it's really, really it's crazy. Yeah. And you grew up in the um, South Bronx, I grew up a fighter, so. Yeah. I mean, Sad, I, I don't want to, I, I, don't, I don't think, I don't want to tackle like kind of world, big world issues because I know a lot of the fans tune in. Thank you guys. I know you guys look forward to this because we're, we're dishing the tea on a cycle every week. And I just caught the shade, Ms. J. I just caught the shade. Can you stand up and show us your shirt just a little bit more? Just a scotch. I just caught the shade. Saint Laurent. Oh, oh, Saint Laurent. You know who I thought that was? <laughs> you know who I thought Nigel. that was from the top? No, because people kept writing, is that Twiggy? Is that Twiggy? We thought it was <laughs> no. shady because Twiggy no, is on it's... cycle five because this is Janice's last cycle is cycle four. Well, yeah. when she got knocked, then knocked right out the cycle. Just knocked right out the cycle, Miss Miss yes. Janice. Yeah, so... Okay, I mean, there's, there's, there's so much to dig into. I know so many of you guys want to talk about the issue. Uh, the first question I have up, um, which really kind of addresses e everything, really, it's from Zoe Yanni, uh, and she asked, I would like to know, with the recent resurfacing of the video of Tyra talking about Danny's Gap, what was y'all's stance on the issue? People are really bashing her. And I wonder if you guys would think it was acceptable for her to try and somewhat force her to close the gap. So but, I'll preface, I'll, Miss Jay, I'll let you talk about this, but I'm just gonna preface it. We'll talk about this quickly, but Danny is cycle six. Let's stick to cycle four, because trust me, cycle four has got so much for us to unpack. 
But go ahead, Ms. Jay. What do you want to say about Danny? We, I was going to say, I saw a statement from Danny that was brilliant, and we could talk about that during cycle six. So guys, yes. save all those questions about, you know, gap gate, save it all until then. I love it. Gap gate. Has, hashtag gap gate. Put gap gate in your questions, and we will definitely hit it up in two Fridays. Gap gate, Danny. But Danny did put up a, an amazing message. For those of you who want to hear her point of view, go to uh, it's Danny Evans one, go to her page. I'm friends with Danny. I thought she did a beautiful job at a seven minute video and it was very powerful, eloquent. And, and, and no makeup and she, and she looked good doing it. So but she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. So, um, okay. So that, that's really great. Um, the next question that I have here is from Tony the Pony. Um, Mr. J, Miss J, I have a question for Jay's chat. Generally, do you think Tyra implemented and endorsed toxic beauty, beauty stereotypes within the show? If so, do you think it uh, was to appease the reality aspects of having the competition show, or do you think uh, she should be held accountable for that? I'm well, I'm never been on those. I'm, you know, um, is it Tony? Yeah, Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tony, I'm I'm not there for a production, so I don't know what those production meetings are. Who comes up with the with the creative? Remember, you know, me being a judge, not then. I was only aware of what was happening as I saw on television myself because there's a lot of times I wasn't there. You know, Jamie yeah. was there more than I did, and so, I think sometimes, you know, if one does something, they should be accountable for it. You know, I think yeah. that one should um, toxic so, beauty was based go on, go ahead, DJ, Toxic Beauty was based on what? You know, I think the, the issue that they're having is they're starting to feel like there was a double standard, maybe may, from what I'm understanding, I could understand it wrong because there's so mm -hmm. many opinions out there uh, on the web, but it, it's kind of like Tyra's talking out of two sides of her mouth, one minute. She started the show with the intention truly to find the next top model. She wanted to give these girls challenges mm -hmm. um, that, 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 accurately represented the fashion industry. So on the first side, I don't think, I think everyone's throwing Tyra under the bus unfairly. Tyra was trying to give the girls what it was gonna be like in the industry. And you all keep saying that the industry was like that or the show was like that 15 years ago. But what you guys keep forgetting is the fashion industry. Yes, it has taken small little steps forward, but yes. it's the same industry. And it is still... not fair, it's not fair. They want a perfection that nobody has. That's number one. Number two, we talk about plus size models. Plus size models, yes, they're important. And I think it's amazing. But you might see one or one or two black girls on a runway. And Ashley Graham, I mean, she's breathtaking and stunning. But how many plus size models do we really keep putting out there? Jay, do you have a exactly on that? Other than, and, and I feel that my, and, and, and for me, I'm going to jump on that. If you're going to put out plus size models on the runway, it makes the men the show with the other girls that one would consider normal or thin, then put them out there. But I think mm -hmm. throwing one or two in there, eh, you're just doing that to, to appease what's happening, what people are saying. Right. If you're going to really go into it, go into it and do it right. Simple. And right now, the fashion is changing. What Tyra was doing back then was probably quiet. What most fans, what your fans don't know, is that there may be certain requirements of a casting director who's casting for beauty or a hair campaign. Did you know that most hair campaigns, the girls have to have their own hair and not weaves? Mm -hmm. True, true. So, so, so there's a lot of these things that the, the, the general audience doesn't know about fashion. And I think Tara was trying to push the envelope. I mean, she pushed the envelope and you'll know that further down with, you know, with, um, with our transsexual models, you know, with mm -hmm. our trans models and with, mm -hmm. you know, plus size with Takara, you know, she wasn't just standing the size of the boobs. And I, I, once we said back then, she wasn't set up for failure. Tara was pushing the envelope is what she was doing. Absolutely. And so it got to yeah, the and edge and went over the top, but in the end she was pushing the envelope trying to get it out there. Yeah. And I think, I really do think Tyra is being thrown under the bus. Uh, unfairly, but I'm going to be, I'll, I'll be honestly, people are throwing her under the bus. Um, but I think at the same time, I, like I can't defend her. I can't get inside her head of what she meant with certain things. This cycle, right. a lot of very controversial things happen. And I'm just going to stipulate this guys. Um, everyone keeps asking, well, who allowed that? Oh, but the Jays stood by and let this happen and this and this and this and that. Okay. Let's be real. 
it was Tyra, as she always says in the press, it was her show. It was her show. She was the host. Let's be clear. Number one, anything that happened on that show is sanctioned by or was something was creative that Tyra put forward. Now, where I worked with Tyra in the previous cycle, cycles one, two, and three, you know, we'd sit on the phone and talk about photo shoot creative and blah, blah, blah. Cycle four, and I think why I'm feeling stressed even talking about cycle four, was the first cycle because the show was so huge at the time. You know, we just That's came up the whole Eva win, who nobody knew. Now, all of a sudden, the other exec, and there were a couple of co-EPs and other executive producers, but the other main executive producer, you all know him, Ken Mock. Ken and Tyra started doing the huddles. Jay, I got, I, we got to speak the truth. They did the huddles, yeah. and then it was about creative being dictated down. We also had more sponsors. I noticed some of you asked questions about there were a lot of sponsors this season. There were. So my job now became... How do I make it look like fashion? How do I appease the sponsor, whether it be like Luberderm, like we did with the, with the alligator shoe right. we're gonna talk about. Um, then what Ken wanted, who knew and still doesn't know anything about fashion. You say the house of Masoni, he turned to me and said, what's Masoni? So he knows nothing about fashion. And then you got Tyra's wand. So you have all this, I had to create a show. Uh, but, what, when, what, but, what? but when people come to me and say, well, you stood there for the, a lot of this creative, no, I was hired to do a job and I had bosses who told me, this is the creative you have to create around. Execute it, execute Execute, it. Execute, Execute yes. it. Tyra also had bosses, by the way. Network. She did, she did. Tyra had bosses too, network. So you don't know what the network is feeding for their ratings, what they're feeding her, which just a feed produces. Remember, and you can say, Jay, I was never part of the, never part of the huddle because I was never part of the creativity as far as I'm concerned, I was born in, Jay, what do you think we're going to do so-and-so? And so this is your, your runway teach. And I would, and I would, bring, and I would bring, you in for, I'd bring you in for final runway, which we're, we'll talk about. Yes. Well, we can talk about it now. This is one of my favorite, one of my favorite runways. I always wanted to do the girls walking on water. And I found that location where I could build the hexagonal runway in a fountain. We drained it, built it, and refilled it. Mm -hmm. And again, when I did the runways, actually right to the time I, I left the show, that was the one thing no one wanted to touch. Production, they were like, Jay, go figure it out. Just go figure it out. But so I would go with Miss Jay. We go do, I said, we're going to do the walk on water stomp. It was, look, I thought it was yeah, epic. Yeah, look for the locations. And I'm familiar yeah. with all that stuff because I remember, you know, the inspiration coming from a lot of different sources. You know, Moses. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because I you think know, you, said something, you said something in the episode about, uh, something about, I said, well, oh, I don't know about, you said something about Jesus, something about walking on water. And, and yes. I, well, I don't know if he had that walk. And he said, oh, it was, but it was just hidden under the road. Yeah, in the road. <laughs> and so therefore also too, I remember, you know, with Alexander McQueen, when he did his show, you know, with mm -hmm. Deborah Shaw in the cage and how she walked into all the water. So, I mean, there's lots of different things that are inspirational and to preset the models for what could possibly happen in fashion. Yeah. And this is where I think Tara was trying to go with it. And then sometimes it would be creative that I would kind of go, oh, I don't, I don't get that. I was usually a little upset with the makeover because I thought, mm, that makeover is just maybe not so right for that um. girl. And that's where, guys, you get into the thing. And, I, and, and this is a big discussion, and I have certainly not gone online and read a lot of it. I've, I've seen some of it, but okay, I understand how upset you guys over some of the makeovers, which again, Jay and I had no, we did not dictate those. That was really just one person's vision. Um, but again, you know, you have to understand, yes, we're trying to replicate for the, the fashion industry, but at the same time, it was a reality show. It's like watching any reality show. Do you guys really think it's real? From the Kardashians to the Real Housewives, Gosh, it's like so, those are so scripted. I mean, and, you know. And, well, you, well, okay now, when it comes down to the scripted part, fans, so that you know. Oh, it we was were scripted. a problem with me when they would try to get me to say things and I'd be like, that's not how I speak. And that yeah. was always a struggle. It was always a struggle for me because I'm like, that's not my voice. I can't say those words. Give me the words that are important in it and everything else, I will dance around it. So Just here, my, what's on my mind is on my tongue. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly you. And so that's another thing, guys. I'm going to speak up for Miss J. First of all, Miss J, you can all tell we're live. We're not edited. Articulate, smart, hilarious. Well, you, got little, you got the funny bits here and there. Yeah, I'm going to speak up because I know because I was there. Miss J, you all say, and I know some of you tried to come at him 
with Gapgate. But let me just tell you, I've, Jay always spoke his mind when he was sitting there with Tyra. And on that, that judging that you all see, but we're gonna save it for cycle six, I know Jay spoke up. But what you guys don't understand is the power of the, this. The, the power of the edit. You've heard the contestants talk about it. We can talk about it. Now we can talk about it legally. We were not, just so you know, we weren't legally allowed to talk about this. I couldn't even talk about anything around production for five years after my last air date. So the edit is so powerful. And Miss J would often speak up and I would say, do you, do you. And then when you guys see the episode, cut. And I know Danny talked about it. I know Tiffany talked about it because we're in the Tiffany cycle. Let's talk about her. She, we're in casting. This is the casting that Tiffany walked back in, right? Tiffany walked back in. And we were like, oh, and she said she'd been through anger management and what have you. And so she made it into the house. And I know, Miss Jay, what were you thinking at that time, the first time you saw Tiffany come back? Well, I said there was something about Tiffany that clearly that Tyra loved about this girl, because she went to her back then. She went to see this girl succeed, and she went to push her. And I think that's why when Tyra went off on her, Tyra, I think, took it personal, because Tyra fought to get her back Mm -hmm. there on the show, and she felt that the girl didn't want it as much as Tyra wanted it for her. So yeah, if we're gonna skip all the way, I mean, so, uh, I mean, sure, no. you know, Tiffany, I mean, a lot of people wrote questions about, the, you know, the, the meltdown. Um, oh, well, here's a good question before we even talk about the meltdown. Um, this is uh, K speak with an E at the end. I think, I hope I said that right. Uh, if the panel is ever divided on who goes home, does Tyra have the final say? Um, she's just always her, and she and Ryan Voback have been wondering. Well, Miss Jay, you sat on the panel. I see Nigel's trolling down in the there, comments. There's... So I'm sure he can speak up too. But go ahead. No. <laughs> Not you... that damn Nigel. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm going to leave Nigel alone right now. Nigel, behave. Um, <laughs> anyway, there were struggles on the show where there's people that on Mars that I agree that should have been there, that wasn't there. There was a lot of struggling, and it came down to Tyra. It is her show. She knew what the sponsors wanted. She knew the image that they wanted, the visuals that she wanted to put out there to build and create that image for that client, whether it was going to be the taller girl, the shorter girl, the girl that was mm -hmm. a little plus size, the girl that was not so pretty. She was mm -hmm. trying to create that, if I'm making sense. She was trying to create that image with everything in mind. So in the end of it, <laughs> Tyra had the final decision. She, she had the final, final decision. decision. And often, you know, the panel was divided. And I've sat on the panel. I would sit in the final judgings. So, yes, the panel would be, decide, uh, be divided. And really, uh, and I don't even want to put it just on Tyra, because I think that would be throwing her under the bus. It was a, it was a Tyra Ken Mock decision. I mean, it's her show. It's her show. She, knew, she, had, the, she had the executive meetings. She had the meetings with the sponsors the people that were paying these girls that, that contract, so forth and so on. So she had to, Tyra had to deliver, and she tried to, her best to produce what they wanted. So mm -hmm. in the end, you know, and then sometimes I think when we chose a girl, I'll be like, hmm, I wish it was a girl that never even made it onto the show that I thought she should have been Because I'm always thinking about the girl that's tall, the girl mm -hmm. that can walk, the, the girl that can push through. But some of those girls came on, and they, was as, they were as boring as homemade soap. <laughs> exactly, but but Jay, I think you did say this, but aren't some of the greatest models out there boring as handmade soap? Yes, they and need I mean, to be interesting. Them, and, and some of them, looking at some of these girls, is, is like looking at paint dry or looking at synchronized swimming. Um, no, synchronized swimming, you're hilarious. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like... Uh, so it's not just the small things to make a girl push through. Sometimes a girl needs help. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need to know us to help it because it's not so, all down to getting makeup. Yeah, no, it's not. It's and what you do in clothes and stylus. It's, that, it's what you take with your personality and character and put into the hair and makeup and clothes and ambiance and then energy. So the questions that are going up, because guys, I'm trying to read your questions there. I'm trying to see all the questions we pulled here. Lots going on, but I see everybody is asking uh, about the let let's discuss about the photo shoot that happened in episode five because everyone keeps app which is Jay just for your 
recollection. It's the, the, the photo shoot where we swap the ethnicities. So by the way, just so you guys know, Jay talked about it before, our things planned out. So this is a photo shoot grid. I can't show it for long, not a photo shoot. You this is a whole not, show grid. You, you did not keep I keep every email, I keep every email. Show grid. You're dangerous. You're dangerous. <laughs> Cycle four show grid. I have it right here. So we do have in episode five, it says ethnicity swap holding babies, which is what you guys all saw on TV. So yes, I have the grid there. Um, okay. To be honest with you, when I first saw that on the grid, I, I mean, my parents are from South Africa. They lived through apartheid. The first time I went to South Africa at age seven, it was during apartheid. I have been, I grew up just very aware of the kind of the racial inequality in this. And I was like, this makes me uncomfortable. But okay, so now I'm the creative director. I have to deliver this creative because I'm the one on camera delivering this creative. I remember that morning, that's why I say I have PTSD from this season. I was so stressed out because you know, Jay, I had to go on and say, this is what we're doing, da 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 And I don't believe, I don't know what Tyra's response was to the initial backlash. I know she explained it as it had nothing to do with racism. It had something to do with understanding other races. I don't want to quote her. I don't even remember. But I, I just remember this being very uncomfortable for me. But what could I do? Like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't not be there was the problem. And I don't even remember if I said something on camera, but they... You know, they, they edit the show, so I don't even remember what I said that day. So I'm just trying to understand what was the, the, the purpose of the, the baby switch, the, the, the race switch. I, you know, I don't, I, I, I know you can look up Tyra's answer. Tyra's answered this publicly several times from the first okay. time it aired to, for some reason, every two years, people discover this shoot and they try and cancel Tyra online, which I think is crazy. She has an answer, but you guys have to ask her what her reason was. I don't know her reason was. I just know I was a little uncomfortable with it because it, and it, it would, didn't fly then. You guys kept saying it wouldn't fly today. It didn't fly then. Meaning, I don't, what do you, what do you think, Jay? I, I, you know, the world has changed in the past five years, in the past three months. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back now 14, 15 years ago when, you know, they thought they were being created for television and, and pushing boundaries. Remember, once again, Tyra was about pushing boundaries, not mm -hmm. buttons, boundaries is what she was doing to get it out there. Is and she feeding those... you my text? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Tyra, I'm just joking. I'm like, is she feeding you her answers by text? That was very oh, much no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just outside looking in. Remember, I was sure up to do the casting part of it. Mm -hmm. I may show up to do an introduction to something. I would do my runway teach before I was a judge, and that was it. You never saw me a part of that ever again. Maybe to introduce the girls to something or the runway challenge that they had like a fashion show, mm -hmm. something like that. Other than that, once again, there was a separation of talent and crew in those meetings that I had nothing to do with. Yeah, and I, and I, and I do. Before. And well, you know, Jay, I struggle with it. I struggle with it because obviously, as a creative director, I was in those meetings. I was given the creative. I got, I had an opinion. I had a say. It was a culture, ultimately, by the time we got to cycle four, where it was building somewhat of this kind of toxic production culture. Like, you could give your opinion only but so many times. And I have seen producers been fired in front of my face, screamed at in front of my face, sense. and walked off the show literally mid-cycle because they didn't agree with creative. Now, granted, an executive producer has the final say, but yeah, we, we had to kind of toe the line. I, I, I don't know of anyone that I could say in front of me. And, you, and Joe, I mean, J Joe, oh, he must be talking about me. And Jay, <laughs> you know, oh, he must be talking about me, talking shit about me. Anyway, <laughs> and Jay, you know how, how I was at work. I would come in, do my thing, and I would leave. Yeah, I, I would, would. And you know for a fact, Jay, it's not that I didn't like people in production. And you know also, Jay, where did I eat during lunchtime? Your trailer, either your trailer or my trailer. Yeah. We, I never, I, I never got myself involved in production, guys, fans, never, never, never. They thought, oh, Miss Jay's me, Miss Jean's, Miss Jay doesn't like me. 
No, I just didn't want to fuck with your shit. Don't fuck with my shit. Great <laughs> don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with you. Take my black ass in my trailer. When and, you need me, and, call me to set. Call me to and set, and I'll be a and set. I do yeah. my thing in the end. I'm, I'm up, I'm out. That's it. I don't want to. I don't want to sit down and break bread with you. I'm none of that you know, stuff. I, I just you know, Jay, dis- and I hear, and, and you know, I love your work ethic, and I always have. I, I felt like I, I. It was hard for me because I had to be in a lot of those meetings. Um. What was difficult, what's difficult for me even now today, the culture still is, you know, Hollywood, whether it's Hollywood or whatever, anything that kind of exposes the truth of, you know, then Hollywood turns around and spins and said, oh, that's not true. That never happened. Oh, that's irrelevant. Like they're, they're, they're trying to take down Ryan Murphy's new Netflix show called Hollywood saying it's irrelevant. It's untrue. It's self-absorbed. You know, that's because Hollywood doesn't a lot of times like who they are. Tina Fey had the same issue when she did 30 Rock because she's trying to show the behind the scenes. People don't like to see the behind the scenes. It's a little bit of truth in what people are putting out there. We're not, that's not, for anybody who's been involved in Hollywood, you would know about those experiences. Anybody's been involved in modeling, you would know about those experiences. I remember once Cam Mulder, did a photo shoot, and she was in Africa. She's mm-hmm. running, it was a broken down car, and I remember she's with a Christian Le Croix mm-hmm. flat ball down, and she was like either pouring oil and whatever. You know, again, that was a creative, you know. Did a few people get upset about it? Maybe a few people did, thinking like, how could you say, my head, I'm thinking like, yeah, who would be seen in Africa in the middle of the desert or the jungle, wherever she, the road, and a Christian O'Clock wall gown. Who, 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 who would do that? Mm-hmm. I mean, is that, is that normal? It was a thought. I just speak about it. I just thought, who would, you know? And it's sort of yeah. like, and, and you have the people around, you know, who don't have money looking and smiling, and she's sitting there all gussied up. In my head, I kind of thought, just at that moment, oh, is that normal? People, oh, people, and, Miss, and Jay, I just, Miss Jay, I got I to gotta cut you off only because the kids are writing down below. Get to the questions. Get to the questions. Oh, the sorry. Kids. Oh, okay. Questions. So I'm, I'm like, sorry, let's please. get to the questions. They don't know who Karen Mulder is. That's one thing they don't know. Uh, okay, question. So MUA Christian Josephine wants to know, did you really not know Kaylin's friend had died uh, the day before the graveyard shoot, or was this a production stunt? That's a great I question. Didn't. Yeah, Jay and I was at the shoot. Bad. So so to be clear, the Seven Deadly Sins shoot was definitely my creative I came up with. I love the idea of the Seven Deadly Sins and we're shooting in, you know, in this casket in a graveyard. We did not know because things happen in real time. Kaylin found out about her friend truly, literally the day before. This shoot that I created, I had created so, like before we even started shooting the cycle. We did Where's not that know. Where's that grid, bitch? Where's that grid, bitch? Show that grid. Where's that grid? You got that grid? It's on the grid. Um, but the thing is, the thing is that um, absolutely we did not know. Production was very concerned. I believe there was an off the camera conversation with her first. And then they said, talk to Jay, you know, when you get to suit. So I asked her, are you comfortable? You know, you don't have to do this. And she said, no, you know, I'll do it. The ironic thing about that shoot is Kaylin and Naima, who won that season, the two of them slayed their photo shoot. Kaylin's, Kaylin and Naima, where they were the best photos for sure. So Kaylin actually challenged, you know, channeled her energy. She pulled through. She was so strong. Obviously, she went right through to the final two. Um, I thought she was really great. So, yeah, but that was not a stunt. Um, someone asking another one about the ethnicity photo shoot. Um, someone saying, is it true that the country couture photo shoot that took place in, oh, that's cycle five. Sorry guys, we'll save that one. I didn't even realize that was a cycle five one. Um, people are asking about the panel being divided again. Uh, is there a gym? So this is Sabrina Walker. Is there a gym in the house or do the models really just have to watch what they eat the whole time? I remember Kenya talking about the bread because Kenya's, Kenya, this was a big thing that was discussed this cycle about her gaining weight. Yeah, her cycle, body, and, her, yeah. And you, and you, but you can see her body, you can see Kenya's body shifting and changing right before your eyes on camera that you can mm-hmm. see. But it was just also about your intake. But I don't know. Did there, is no g- there was no gym, I don't believe. I don't know if they were allowed to go. I don't know the answer to that. Do you, you, 
don't no, but so. I, haven't, I haven't been in too, too many houses other than where you have to come in and Jay enter here and, and, and say what you say right here and, and then I'm out. So I don't know if there was a gym in the house because normally the, the apartments were in luxurious homes. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they had a gym in the home and they certainly were busy every single day so they weren't allowed to go out to the gym. Yes, yes, mm. yes. So mm. people are saying, can we go back to talking about Tiffany and the meltdown? We hadn't gotten there yet, but we're just moving through the episode, but we're kind of there now. Oh, we also had the Zodiac photo shoot, which no one has asked about, but it happened to be one of my favorite ones. I love that. But okay, so let's talk about the seventh episode, which was the famous episode where the first time in history, they had eliminated two girls at once. So it was both Rebecca and Tiffany, it was a double elimination. And Tyra announced at that moment um, that both of them were going home and both girls had two very different reactions. Jay. Well. Rebecca cried, obviously. Re Rebecca cried and fainted, hit the floor, and that was a hard fall. And that was not. No, she didn't fall. No, she didn't fall. Then, oh, she fell in the cycle, but it wasn't that at that moment. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, but, yeah. yeah. So when she fainted, that wasn't that was not done for TV. That was a serious. For she had some sort of a, um, some sort of a disease where it allowed you know the cause her to faint. No, and that was. Me, I, well, I'm just, oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Tiffany's moment was Tiffany just basically I think felt that she that she wasn't good enough to do it because whatever the issues were with her that she was having. This that has she been just, just yeah. This has been just discussed so many that, times. Yeah, just that okay, e enough. What else can I do? You know? And you probably give up. And I think she was at that state where she would just give up, be like, just get yeah, me out of here. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's honestly where I think definitely that is where um, Tiffany was. Uh, my understanding, and I, I, I had spoken to her post the season, and, you know, you can see it on her faces, guys, in the edit, you can see it in her face. She's just like, she turned to the girls and said, don't cry for me, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, think I, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That was just her honest reaction. She just reached a place of giving up. And again, I cannot speak for Tyra. I don't think either one of us can. Reality uh, television is a real moment. Reality yeah, but I think Tyra was, moment. I think Tyra actually, this is my opinion. This is just my opinion, guys. I think in that moment, Tyra kind of put herself in Tiffany's place, so to speak. I, I'm just this is just me vamping now and kind of didn't want her to feel that defeat. And Tyra did not want Tiffany to be so defeated. And so therefore Tyra got upset. That's what I think welled up the rage. I, I don't know, I really don't know because to be honest with you, Tyra and I used to talk about everything. This was one thing we didn't talk about. I was on the judging set on the side. So I saw the whole thing go down. And I know I've spoken to Nigel about it too. He definitely, even if he watches the clip of that scene, he goes, his stomach flips. And like me too, because I well, never every, heard well, Tyra yell like that, ever, ever. Because all of a sudden Tyra just snapped. And for me, I again, mean, once again, snapped. I was not there. I only, saw on, I only saw it on TV. I heard that she had gone off through a production conversation. That with Tyra, the honey Tyra went off, which you see it. That was it, but I didn't know what had happened. And so I saw the episode, I kind of thought, oh my God. And you know me, Sometimes I ramble because I'm trying to place, like give you how it got to that point. But this time I didn't know what got to that point. Other than she said, child, look, look you did, don't cry for me. In other words, I think that was almost a slap in the face to production and to Tyra and judging for like, all this we're trying to do for you here. And you looking at it, it's like, oh, it's no big deal, child, please. And you, you threw shade at it and paid her mind. I think that may have led Tyra to snap. But until I can get Tyra on the phone right now, she asked, might, was that her calling you? Someone actually wrote, was that, yes, was, yes, was that Tyra called. calling her? I'll say, Tyra girl, what, Tyra girl, what made that happen? What, why did you stop? Um, yeah, Because we never had that I, conversation. You know, and, and there are reports of other things. Obviously, it's edited. It's edited. So what you guys saw is not the whole argument. Uh, that is pretty much, you know, all I'll say. Um, I know Tiffany has gone on to kind of, 
You can read about it all online to say the other things that were said in the argument. I can say from what I have read, those other lines were things that were said in the room. Uh, but I, 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 you know, that's not my place to kind of get into what was really said and what was edited and what was not. It was a very awkward situation, I think, for everybody. Um, I mean, the judges didn't know what to do. What people don't know, here's the tea I will spill. I was really Tyra was people all rooting for you. <laughs> How dare you? Um, she was so upset that literally when they called cut, Ken Mock walked in, took her by the waist. They walked her, her security came. She walked out, mic pack, dress, heels, everything. She was walked alone out of the building and put into a car and driven away. No one spoke to Tyra. No one spoke to Tyra. That mm -hmm. was the moment. That I remember standing there on the side. Like I felt like my heart was racing. I didn't know what the hell we just watched. It was just, it was so crazy. Um, but I know, I know Tyra just def she wanted more for Tiffany. That I do know. She just wanted yeah, more for Tiffany. I mean, in this case, she fought to get her back on the show because she fought with the reduction. She fought with the network, or well, basically the network to say, give this girl a chance. Yeah, she did fight for her. So I think she Tyra felt like, you know, Tyra, you know, she felt like maybe Tiffany slapped her in her face. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I can't but, uh, speak about it further. Yeah, talking about it further makes it so um, scary for me. Ms. G, I'm gonna give you our time warning because you said, tell us how, what time, we're, we're only well, at 12.37. Well, we're mean, at 12.37, we got lots yeah. of more time. Okay, because we need to get to some more questions. They, yeah, we, the oh, yeah, yeah, because the questions are, yeah. So, there, oh, by the way, Naima chimed in and said there was a treadmill in the house. So thank you, Naima, if you're watching. By the way, we love you, Naima. She chimed in and said, uh, okay. that, uh, yeah. So, yeah. so girls, so you didn't walk it out. Yeah. So, Kenya girl, you didn't walk off that bridge. Kenya. Yeah. Kenya. So one of the Kenya. questions is from Pry, it's, it's P-R-Y-N-X-R-E-X -E asked, how was the experience visiting Nelson Mandela's cell in South Africa? Well, it, for me, ahead, it was, for me, it was quite heavy because I never thought that I would actually in my lifetime visit that cell, let alone the island. And when he explained mm -hmm. to me the brown sugar versus the white sugar, I mm -hmm. found really interesting the guy, and I'm thinking like, but brown sugar is healthier. And he explained, mm -hmm. no, for them, the white sugar was dumb, and the white sugar was healthy for them, and how much mm -hmm. they would give them. And, and there was like nothing, you know, for them to eat with the padding, the, the padding yeah. that they sleep on, you know, that little piece of padding the rocks that were cracking outside. I mean, it was quite emotional because you stand and think like, oh my God, this is where Nelson Mandela sat for so long. It was, yeah, it it's so, it, for me, you know, for me, shooting in South Africa was very emotional. First of all, I have some, all my relatives were there. Miss J would always like tease me, my, my cousins, everything. Cause my parents are from South Africa, from Cape Town and we shot in Cape Town. So it, when I had a little bit of free time, I did visit some of my aunts and stuff. But um, for me, was, feet. And they had they had fancy feet. <laughs> Shut up, Jay. Um, the thing for me was interesting because the first time I ever went to South Africa, I was born in the United States. Um, I, I grew up in Canada. I was born in Illinois. But for me, the first time I went to South Africa was when I was seven, and it was still during apartheid. So I experienced two very different. I had different experiences, and I had been back a few times. So going back to shoot with Top Model was emotional. And I know the girls found it emotional. Uh, I know a lot of production did, I know Tyra did too. So that was a very big thing. It was an amazing thing that the girls got to experience that with this cycle. So that, that's great. You know, that's a, that's a great question, guys. So, oh, they were talking about the Kalen thing. Oh, now let's, we're talking about the Kenya. There's a lot of Kenya questions because we did a photo shoot where the, we were at an ostrich farm um, where the girls had to dance with um, kind of these local men, you know, they were dancing and uh, uh, when Kenya did her photo shoot, she, the, the, uh, the guy she was dancing with was slightly grunting. She said, she stopped the shoot because I said, why do you look, so why, why are you so dead? And she's like, she pulled me aside and said, well, the guy is kind of grunting. Um, uh, and, and, and at the time I didn't know what was going on, but the way it was edited, they, she felt, you know, and she felt like, <laughs> she felt like he was kind of, you know, Kind of <laughs> exactly that happened. There was a little uh, rise in the flap. Mm -hmm. Something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs>
Jay, stop it. Okay, yeah. So Kenya felt uncomfortable. Um, well, I, I mean, didn't, I, I didn't know. know to the extent because that's another thing people don't realize when the girls do their full interviews, it's kind of put at the end of the day. I didn't know how uncomfortable Kenya was because she didn't tell me how uncomfortable she was. And I didn't really know 100% what was going on at the time. But um, yeah, that was a really uncomfortable thing to happen. And especially, and of course it's uncomfortable, especially when you, you can't have it. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to the next you, question. You um, have been <laughs> once, bitch. You Becky, can't have it. <laughs> Becky underscore bitter. I love your username. Which is oh, Becky, Becky bitter. underscore bitter. <laughs> Becky bitter. Michelle's makeover going to ice blonde from dark brown seemed not just unnecessary, but painful on purpose. Was it considered safe to do that in one step? Well, I can speak to that because my hair color is a lot darker than um, obviously Michelle's. And here's where I think what really happened. And I know from experiencing it myself, you cannot wash your hair the like the morning of or even the night before you're getting you're going to bleach your hair. Oscar James, who does my hair, the, the hair master, the celebrities, the stars, has told me forever, like, girl, don't wash your hair, don't scratch your head. Da -da 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 -da. So with my hair, olive you oil. can. All yes, you know I do it. First of all, you got to olive oil is head and that olive oil. Coming. Baby, that I put a towel. So early and greasy. I put a that towel that down. I put a towel down. Don't <laughs> say that. But um, yes, I, you have to wash your hair, rinse your hair only. Do not shampoo it, dry it, olive oil it, and sleep in oil and stuff. Now, the problem with Michelle, with all the girls, they don't know when makeovers is coming. So the problem was Michelle showed up that morning, just yeah. washed her Wash. hair. It was it still was. damp, shampoo scrubbing her scalp. That's what made it so painful. I, I can tell you I've, I've suffered my own pain disasters painful. with my own hair. Yeah, extra, extra painful. painful. And unfortunately, yeah. that's what caused that common staph or bacterial infection that she ended up getting, which was treated. Uh, but no, it wasn't done I, on purpose. And no, I didn't like a blonde. And no, it was not done on purpose, you know, to get those girls goats. No. Um, no, that was not, not done on purpose. No, not so, at all. Uh, Jake, Jason B. Illustration wants to know, was Luvies, or Uvi, I forget how we pronounce her name, Uvi's, Pisces photo really the worst in ANTM history? Did she have a better shot in her film um, that wasn't picked? Uh, actually, that uh, is the truth. That, again, yeah. I can't answer that question, guys. I wasn't there. I don't choose a film. I would love to speak more about this subject. Yeah. But yeah. fans, as I answered back, I wasn't there, so I can't answer that question. Yeah. yeah, well, that I can tell you that actually was her best photo. There was no other photo pics. Unfortunately, that was her best photo. So that's the truth. Next question, photo shoot. Uh, why weren't there touch-ups done on the girl's hair as the season went on? Michelle has her uh, hair bleached, and as the season progressed, her roots were very visible. Go ahead, say it, Miss J. You said it how many times? You, you used to say, why aren't the girls getting touch-ups? You used to say I would say, say that. that, and I would say it all the time. How come? How come the, the black girls were there? Even for the white girls, too. The oh, weaves, my God, the weaves would be so loose it's, it's, and ratchet. Would be and loose. Just, it was and, oh, I would, and then all of a sudden, you'd be sitting there, and you'd be like. <laughs> literally, oh. literally, literally, hair would be moving out. OK, another question, because they're saying more questions. Uh, Mr. Tin Anthony asks, out of, remember we did an, where'd you go, Jay? Girl, where'd oh, you right go? I was, I, was, I was grabbing something. Uh-oh. Anyway, so they, they want to know about the animal photo shoot. Remember we did a photo shoot where all the girls were different animals and we, they shot with a real live alligator in South Africa. Right. Uh, which, by the way, y'all, you know, <laughs> yes. You know. <laughs> Jay, you're funny. Okay, so with that photo shoot, with that photo shoot, um, yes, for some reason during the intro, the wind blew and the network felt that they had to blur my nipple for some reason on TV at the time. I don't know why. Don't they know didn't why. blur you, not, you Nigel's quite, nipples, so, but whatever. So Janet Jackson was biting off you, so she stole that from you. She and I don't know, but they didn't blur Nigel's nipples when, if, when he was shooting on the thing. I go, I don't know. They blurred my nipple. Maybe it was too dark. Nigel, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Ooh. oh, you, you shade, you shade. I love it though. Um, uh, anyway, um, so the animal photo shoot. 
This is Mr. Tin Anthony. Out of all the animals, why was it chosen for Kenya to represent an elephant, especially immediately after being chosen to be gluttony in the deadly sins the week before? I, was that meant to be shady? You said that you chose the animals based on how you thought they represented the girls. So how did the elephant represent Kenya? That was so, that bread. <laughs> that is not what happened. That is not what happened. Don't say shit like that. That is not what happened. So you sure? Because y'all saw that girl blowing up some meat and all that bread. Y'all made that girl a glutton <laughs> and then an elephant. So that was the way the girls. Up. I'm sorry. No, no, it wasn't. Oh my God. So the way the girls were chosen for their animals. Again, Tyra's consulted everything. So I would go to her with a list of girls. Like we'd have literally even sidebar meetings on shoot. Here are the animals. Who do you want to be whom? So the reason Kenya was chosen was actually because she had a broader face, nothing to do with her weight. This was a long time ago. And we had to pre-buy all the <laughs> we had to pre-buy all the elements for the girls because that's not something you can just pull styling for. You, 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 you had to pre-buy you know, all the, the Do you know the props? Because Danilo and Matthew Anderson were doing hair and makeup. They needed so specific you stuff. So I can only imagine you guys sitting there prop shopping and saying you know, something. Before we even flew to South Africa. So it was Elephant. before she gained weight. <laughs> we we were had to represent. <laughs> Kenya, I get so. you, Kenya, girl, I love you. I get you, girl. I understand, girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you eat that bread. I'm on your side, Kenya. Yes, they, we, they got you. They we shit. did not. Okay. We did not. We did not. Evan Maxwell asks, Tiffany said in an interview, uh-oh, back to Tiffany. Tiffany said in an interview that Tyra really yelled at her for way longer than she said, yes, we know that, and said, quote, you can go back to your house and sleep on that mattress on the floor with your baby. But the editors cut it short. Is that true? Like I said, that scene was edited. There was a lot more said. And yeah, we'll let Tiffany call that quote out. I mean, it's, it's, there are many quotes out there. You can Google them. So that's what's wow. Evan asked. Um, Something mm. is A-Y-Y-R-A-M-I-K. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. A-Y-Y-M-R-K. Yeah. Uh, what was it actually like to experience the melt oh, another meltdown, but meltdown between Tyra and Tiffany. I think we answered that question. I, I was there. Nigel was I watched, there. You, you were there. And it I was terrifying. There. I, I watched on TV. It was terrifying. I did a, I did a pearl clutch. Mm hmm But I said on TV, and I gagged. Well, have, let me put it this way. Have you all had friends that you thought you really, really, really knew, and then they go off in a way that you've never really experienced? I'd known Tyra since 1996. Seven. No, 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 sorry. Like, yeah, like 96, 97, working with her somewhere in there, uh, or 99, somewhere like that. Yeah, and I mean, I thought I knew her. I'd never seen that side of her. So for me, it was, it was, it was terrifying. I don't know. Fans, that side of me is just normal. Because <laughs> I would fuck you up. I would fuck you up. It's very simple. Miss Jay, you let me what? be clear. Jay, your let bark is bigger than you say. You are not that okay. person. You, you actually, what's the okay. line I always tell you? Because Miss Jay <laughs> likes to come off as real tough. And she's gonna let you know before she lets you go, like she let Nigel know. But beneath, underneath Jay's, you know, as the, he likes to pretend like there's this crusty black no, heart. Not, there's this pretending. pink heart with no, these no. big softy no. beaten under there. Yes. Let me tell you something. And you you're know, you're a I good am. person. I'm, you know, you're a good person. You try to well, think no, you no, are. I do. I'm a very good person. But when you fuck me, I have to fuck you up. That's just very simple. <laughs> That's just the bottom line. Wait, wait. You know, it, how it, did you get that scar again? Wait. How baby, did you get I'm this scar you. again? <laughs> <laughs> right there, he had a knife for him. He threw a knife at me. I set that motherfucker on fire. Yes, I did in school. <laughs> yes, I did. That's, that's the time head. for another chat, girl. Okay. Shit. Okay, so, let me start. okay, so Spirit Electricity says, uh, in a week's time, we see the girls participate in a challenge and a photo shoot. What else do the girls do during a week? Well, guys, remember, a week, you guys saw a week, is four days. So day one was always the teach uh, maybe maybe the teach or they got to do some other things. Day two was like a challenge or some other prize thing. Day three was the photo shoot always, unless it was a special photo shoot. And then day four was judging. So they saw every, they did everything in a four day cycle. So it wasn't a week, but that's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, and sometimes the girls did get to go out and you know, and, and maybe go to a local club or something there, maybe just to kind of let themselves free and get and get loose. I mean, right. wasn't that why Tiffany got, no, that was in the casting when Tiffany got the beer put on the head. Yeah. 
That was that was in that was the previous season. It was the previous oh, yeah. season, not this season. Yeah. yeah. So morg underscore yance, interesting username. I think I spelled it, I pronounced it correctly. Are there medics on set to deal with the issues like Rebecca passing out? Absolutely. You know, for photo shoots, especially, it was one of my responsibilities. Anything. Uh, like, you know, obviously uh, the, the alligator, which I know you guys, a lot of people have asked, the alligator was alive, it was a live alligator. Um, and, but it, it did have, it did have uh, wire around its mouth. Um, it had been recently fed. It was also, uh, yeah, so it was a safe scenario, but there's always, there are always medics there. They, we have to have medics on set. It's and a because, requirement. And, and fans, there's a place that we call Video Village and that's where they usually are seated. And video yes. village watching what's happening on camera. Where I would where I would sit sometimes, obviously when I wasn't on the judging panel, I'd be sitting in video village, a front row seat to the real drama unedited. Um another girl, um, after a girl is eliminated, does she really go home? How do you keep the spoilers from leak and leaks from happening? Well, we answered this, I believe, in our first chat, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe uh, she didn't see this. This was also spirit electricity. Um the girls do not go home. That's the thing. They go to a hotel and they are chaperones because we have to, you can't send everybody home while we're in production. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and anyway, we usually use those girls anyway, Miss Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. We use the girls in the final um, runway fashion show. We mix them with local models and the girls on the show, you know, mm -hmm. for the fashion the visuals. So, some, yeah. so, so yeah. sometimes those girls are you know, running around enjoying the city if they eliminated pretty early, they get to be an incredible, you know, tourist. Tour. They get to be tourists. So here's a question for you, Miss J. Martin Tan Anthony's also asking, Miss J, uh, who was your favorite finalist of the final runway? To me, Naima had the fiercest runway I'd ever seen yes. on Top Model on the final runway. She was serving it, he wrote. Yes. Do you agree? She, she, no, I, I, no, she was my favorite because she served the personality. She served it. Served. I it think Naomi... Energy. So did I say Naomi? Ooh, she must be talking about us, girl. <laughs> we both know Naomi well. Let me check my text messages. Uh, but uh, no, Naima, Naima definitely for me, I remember watching backstage on the monitor, she was on the runway and I went, Naima is killing it. Absolutely, yeah. She, yeah. She, she served. Yeah. So that was the end of, yeah, that was the end of our pre, pre, you know, pulled questions. I see you guys also have some questions down there. Miss J, you always wanted to know what time thing where we've literally got five minutes left um, where we're gonna top. So guys, ask us right there in the chat, right in front of us, anything else that we have missed about cycle four of America's Next Top Model? Oh, they're asking, Janice, talk about Janice, 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 please, thank you. Because this is her last cycle when she got her, what Jay? What did Janice get? She got the beat down, honey. No, no, she you said, snatched. what do you call it? You do she your- got, She got snatched and you got, got the- the, Got the- Papers. papers. <laughs> got the papers. Um, Janice has many things. Janice is very, very special. She, you know, and again, for people who are of a certain age, um, Janice would speak about what she experienced in fashion, what was real, what was not real. And Janice, mm -hmm. Janice was good TV, but when she made sense for the period in which she was modeling, and I can go right back to same with Tyra, same thing with myself. What was happening in 2006 shifted by 2020, well, shifted yeah, by 2012. Yeah. So those things, there were certain things and wants that agents and clients wanted. And again, envelopes are being pushed. Now they're looking at girls and models today who are a little more realistic that are feeding the generation mm -hmm. of believers that I am beautiful as I am. You know, I was never a beauty, but God damn it, I'm mm -hmm. fucking smart. And I know my shit. So, and if I know my he, shit, I talk about my shit. Yeah. And yes, yes, Janice, it, it, there were some production difficulties and she, she, they, she, she argued with, you know, the powers that be uh, mm -hmm. a little too much. Uh, you know, she's great TV, but it, it got to a point where I think it, it was difficult for production, unfortunately. And uh, it's okay. And again, it's guys, fans, we love you dearly. It's, it's always important for you to speak your truth and to speak up. But also remember, it's the message and the messenger. And it's how you deliver the message to make it clear so you understand what was happening. 
sometimes mm-hmm. things would be said on panel when I was a judge. I'd be like, huh? And I didn't get mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I thought, mm-hmm. it would be a note written. I was sitting at the time, right? Tyra, a note. Because mm-hmm. explain it to me so I can understand where we're going. That way, if I know so, how yeah. about but, it. You know. By the way, a lot of people are writing here. You might be just new joining. We did talk about the Kalen uh, graveyard, all this stuff. If you guys watch, this will be on Instagram Live for 24 hours before it moves over to Facebook. And yes, if you're just tuning in, we absolutely, absolutely will have our Jay's Chat YouTube up in a couple of days. You can watch all these chats where we talked about everything. Other people are asking here about Brittany, real quick. Opinions, Brittany. Remember, they people called her like, she, she, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. like a. I think someone said that she came, or she described herself as because her voice was deep. Like, did she say she was? She comes across as trans, or like, what was it that she said, Miss J? I don't. Trans remember. is beautiful. What she talking about? She trying to throw shade. Uh, oh my God! There's a great question. Some I'm just some I just saw someone go bring this up on the screen about how does Miss J come up with the gimmicks for his judging and his sleeves and his collars? I think that's a great thing that you can talk about each season as we get into the seasons where you're a judge because you are Cause, so creative. Because I'm bored to death. No, you're not bored to death. It's because you're no, talented I'm that. as I'm fuck. That's bored what, to death, I'm sitting, wait, you know. guys, guys. Jay sews his shit himself. He doesn't have anyone make his stuff. Jay does it himself, and yes, I guys, I he's do make talented like things. that, like the gowns. That's Jay. All those things I made my two hands, even thread. Jay would be my mirror because I would go down there, wake him up, and then impose on him. I'd be in my house slippers, so on my jiffy scuffs, and the dress. And I would sit there on my days off. I would sit home and I would make the dress. Yes, the writing talented queen. Yes, yeah, talented queen. I have to Very think talented. about. I have to think about it. You know, living in Paris for so long and being around some of the great designers and watching them create things, and I'm self-taught with everything. I'm self-taught. Yeah. Once I learned how to make a coat from my friend Carol Lewis, I grew up with, and Jennifer Brown, I began to start to create things myself. And I would just yeah. sit back and, and, and try to do the next time. So yeah. we'll talk yeah. about that next we'll week. Talk right about, now we now definitely, you should, talk, you should talk about it. You should definitely talk about it each season. We hit the seasons where you're judging. I think we should start off every chat with that. Um, you guys are amazing for tuning in every Friday. Um, we will be back next Friday. Cycle five. Oh my God. Oh, oh, shoot. Cycle five, London. <gasps> you know, you know what happened. Ooh, yes. Ooh, Ooh, wait, yes, wait. So scary. next week is another good week. Good week. Scary and dangerous. I love doing this with you, Miss Shay. This is so much fun. Yeah, you too. And fans, thank you so much. Remember, we have 16 more to get through. No, wait, yes. no, 16, 14 more to get through. 14 more seconds to get through. Just more. Remember, this is not about dishing. It's about just sharing our experiences through television. All the tea. Yeah. All right. Okay. Take care. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Say, wash hands, wash ass. Have wash a great hands. weekend, everybody. Be careful. <laughs> we'll get through this. Bye. Bye.